Hey, what's going on, familia, Insta familia? I wanted to hop on here for a little bit longer than what a normal square post would let me, so a little longer than 60 seconds, and talk to you guys for a few minutes about some conversations that I'm having in my DMs uh, that I think are, it's gonna, is gonna help um, a majority of people that are kind of searching for what role should I play in this whole Ahmad Arbery situation? Uh, what role should I play when it comes to fighting racism? There's a lot of tiptoeing around, which I actually can appreciate. A lot of tiptoeing around by a lot of my white friends who are coming to me going like, I don't want to post something and maybe feel like I'm being like the white savior, but then I don't want to not post something because I know I should say something and what should I do? And uh, obviously this is a very fluid situation. Uh, this is a very nuanced conversation that I just appreciate so many of you guys are willing to have. So I, I want to really simplify things for you, especially those of you that, that want to see change happen. Everybody feels the need to say something. And what, what I want to let you guys know is that racism in America is not going to be fixed by us yelling about the loudest, most recent, horrendous crime that we have seen. That is very important for us to, to make known. But the truth is, anybody that sees that video is going to say, oh, something's not right. That shouldn't have happened, right? So like anybody, at least with the soul. So. Although it's very important for my white brothers and sisters to make sure that you stand against racism in situations like this. It's so important and I'm so grateful that you do that. That's not where racism is going to be uh, affected in America by us standing up in loud moments like this. Where racism will begin to get eradicated in America is not on the big stages is not on your Instagram feed where you can make a statement, uh, a true statement and a needed statement, um, but that's not where it's gonna be changed. It's gonna be changed in the small quiet moments of your everyday lives. In the small quiet moments of first asking yourself the question, is what I'm doing motivated uh, by any racist tendencies? So just continuing to ask yourself that question. But even the bigger thing to do is to speak up when in the small confines of your community, when you see a racist tendencies um, portrayed. So if somebody that you know that you're really close with, this is gonna be even harder than you posting something about a mod. If somebody that you know is saying something or acting a certain way that makes less of another race, say something then. Don't post it on your Instagram. Look them in the eye and say, hey, listen, that's actually, you're actually expressing uh, racist ideals and that's probably, you know, I, I don't appreciate that. That, that. Those are gonna be the harder conversations to have. And that's why we're gonna need those conversations to happen a lot louder in the confines of your smaller communities than blasting out the bigger, obviously blatant racist moments that we're seeing like this murder hunting down of Ahmad. Look for racist tendencies in your smaller community circles and call them out, speak them out. If you have to call them out on yourself, call them out on yourself. If you have to call them out in friends of yours, call them out in friends of yours. If, if you're giving your grandparents a pass because Oh, that's just the age they grew up in. No, that, that there's going to be something that happens inside of you when you call your grandparents out for possibly having racist tendencies that you may think, you know what, they're old, they, you know, that'll go away with them when they die. No, speak up, speak it out loud and make it known. That's the first thing. The second thing I want to talk about is for my well-meaning friends out there who may want to play emotional police, uh, for a population that just had a scab ripped wide open and a wound exposed. The day that a travesty is brought to light, that an injustice is brought to, not, to light, is not the moment for you to present your emotional police badge. And what I mean by that is telling people to calm down so that they can let facts rise to the surface. We all understand that facts need to rise to the surface in situations like this. We are hoping and praying that all the facts come out. But the moment that this injustice is uncovered is not the moment for you to tell people to calm down. 
Actually, there's probably not a good moment for you to tell people to calm down. The truth is pain is what's going to accelerate people towards taking a stand and advocating towards something that they believe needs to be advocated for. I would just say wait. Uh, wait until you know that there's enough relational bandwidth there that you could even have that conversation. I have gotten to the place emotionally where I was wound up and I needed someone very close to me to tell me that I'm wound up too tight. What I don't need is for um, emotional police on the internet to be policing my emotions that are coming from very real spaces. So I would just say, put the emotional police badge away um, and let feelings be felt. So again, I wanna say thank you for caring. Uh, thank you for speaking. Uh, but more than anything, I want to ask you to speak when there's silence. Speak when you hear and you see things that you know isn't right and that you know propels uh, racist ideas, that's when you have to speak. And that, I'm telling you what, that's gonna be way harder, way harder than ever putting up an Instagram post would be. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, thanks for letting me speak into this for a few minutes. Love you guys so much. And uh, let's do all that we can to eradicate this evil that's in our country. I kinda feel like I'm in, in the Oval Office. This is my Oval Office. Signing off, Carlos. Love you guys.